Uh, so we're doing a teardown video for uh, the Hill Rome C2000 Isolate Infant Incubator, um, uh, especially for the heating unit of it. Um, we, um, Praveen Ramohan, Thomas Trakai, and uh, Frankie Young are presenting this video, and with special thank thanks to uh, Alan Ward. So begin with, the purpose of a uh, uh, convection warmer is to pro provide enclosed incubation for infants so the infants uh, would get its uh, the temperature it needs and will get its warm, uh, it's, it will, uh, the warmer will also provide humidity and oxygen and it will keep track on uh, the infant's skin temperature, uh, the air temperature around it, uh, the infant's weight, and in, uh, in some cases, the infant in, uh, warmer can also be used in an x-ray machine. So here are the major components. On the top left is the front screen. Most of the operations can be done uh, th through this. Uh, it tells the information of the air temperature, the skin temperature, the humidity, and the oxygen content inside the infant incubator. You can also adjust the temperature and humidity and humidity according to your needs. On the top right is the skin temperature sensor. You can connect it to you can connect it to the skin, I mean touching the skin of an infant to uh, monitor the skin temperature. Uh, but to test it, you can simply holding it in your hand and see uh, the temperature. Uh, the temperature of human skin is generally around 34 uh, degrees Celsius, a few degrees below the human body temperature. Uh, on the bottom left is the main, he the main heating unit and the fan. Uh, the aluminum heating unit is, uses the resistance to a current, so uh, a current will run, run through that uh, gray, big chunk of gray unit uh, on the left of that, uh, of the picture, and it will generate heat. And on the right of the picture is a fan. It's an impeller, as we would say in the video. Uh, the, resist, the aluminum heating unit can be taken off to clean in case it's dirty. On the bottom right is the general sensor. Uh, most of the sensors including the skin temperature sensor will be connected to there. It will also sense the air temperature and humidity. Uh, for the peripheral components, this is what it looks like when you take the aluminum heating unit off. The two long rods standing up are the two electrodes, and if dirty, they could reduce the efficiency of the heating. Um, on the right, the silver, the, the little so silver thing is, is the uh, outlet of the humidifier. So if you have a humidifier, if you want to add water, uh, water vapor will come out of there. Most of the uh, external issues would be openings and leaks of various uh, issues, various things, but especially water. So, uh, if not handled properly, the, the leaks could get into inside of the, the motors um, and the heating unit uh, in, the in the main casing that we're going to show you in the uh, general teardown video. Um, so that has to be handled carefully because if you soak the circuit, <laughs> it would have some, uh, it would probably die. But that would be pretty rare since you, unless you, you like just pour water into the entire machine. So there are internal issues. On the other hand, one of the major thing is uh, 
malfunctioning sensors, that the sensors are not working properly, they don't sense the right temperature, it is very easy to tell. You can set the temperature uh, or the humidity to a certain level, and you can use your hand or use, or you can just stick your nose in there, and you can probably tell about the humidity. If the humidity is 85%, you can feel that it's very, very wet in there, and uh, temperature, you, and you can generally sense if the temperature is in the right range. But if you sense the temperature is in the right range that you set, but the sensor is telling you otherwise, the sensor might not be working. And in that case, the sensors probably, uh, in the general case, have to be replaced. On the other hand, the heat, heating control could have issues and may not work very well. This could be caused by various clogs or dirts or, as forementioned, um, if the, the electrodes were dirty or the aluminum heating unit were, was dirty caused by uh, various reasons, especially if you are not using very clean water, the, the water vapor could carry some of those dirts and uh, those dirts into the, uh, the heating region and that could make them dirty. So if the heating control is not working properly, check if they, these things are dirty first and if they're not, then there's probably some deeper issues that cannot be easily fixed. But if those issues are fixed, then that's good. <laughs> and to check whether the heating on controls is working is simply by setting it to a temperature and make sure you have a sensor that's working and if the temperature reaches the, if the temperature sensed reaches the temperature you set, it's good. If it's if it doesn't reach that temperature, it's pretty much bad. By the way, the reference are in the comment section. First thing you got to do when working with an electrical device is to unplug it before you open it up. Uh, the next thing we got to do to start getting to the heater impeller is to unscrew the latches in the front. Go. And then pull down the lid. Next, you got to take out the infant bed. Next, you got to take out the rails and you can just pull those out. Under that is the cover, which can be slid out. And then you can have access to the heater and impeller unit. The first thing you got to do to get inside the infant incubator is to take off the uh, incubator casing. The way you do that is you lift it up. There is a latch on one side that you need to unhook and then you can just lift it off. There we go. And you can just put it away. Next you have to take out the water filter in the back which looks like this as that will spill if you try to open the case with it inside. After that, the last thing on top of the case that you can remove is the aluminum radiator on top of the heating unit. There are four screws on the bottom of the infant incubator that you have to unscrew to open up the casing. Once you remove the screws, you can take off the blue seal on the sides. After that, you can lift up the casing using the handlebars on the sides. It's quite heavy, so when looking at this, there's still some fluid inside, so that is leaking, but it shouldn't affect the rest of the circuitry. So, in terms of the heating unit, inside here is the temperature control that is attached to the monitor. Here is the motor that is attached to the impeller that is what uh, drives the air inside the heating unit. And where is it? And under here is where the heater is directly attached to the 
uh, temperature control, and that is where the power flows into the metal radiator unit. And that is the entire device in terms of the heating unit.